Hey guys, Uncle John, UncleJohnSoap.com. So today, I want to make some soap with you guys. But this one's going to be a little different. So we're going to make a bar of soap like this, or a log of soap. Nice, clean looking bar of soap, right? Out of this. So you might be wondering, what in the world is that? Well, I'll give you a hint. Nah, I'm just going to tell you. It's French fry oil. Sorry. French fry oil. So, basically, there's a restaurant two doors down. And, again, this is not a new idea by any stretch. I didn't come up with this. I mean, people have been doing it forever in third world countries and other places. Depression era U.S., uh, you know, our great great grandparents and great parent grandparents, you know, would take their saved bacon grease and other fats and stuff from cooking. And some of it would be used for more cooking, some of it would be used to make soap and uh, on a budget. So that's what we're trying to do here. Now, I went a little off budget here because I wanted to buy an extra bucket and things like that today. Normally, I had plenty of buckets, but I'm out of empties. So, all right, let's get started. First thing you're going to need is your waste oil, your leftover fryer oil, either personal or from a restaurant. You want to know and get that information what was used in it. Um, so like what was the original oil? For me in this restaurant, it was canola oil. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be other oils in there. They fry all kinds of stuff in these fryers. Uh, you're going to end up with some chicken fat in there and things like that but it's minimal after you've screened it. Um, it's still there. Don't get me wrong. This is not a vegan soap by any stretch. If they've, if they've done nothing but French fries with a vegetable oil and you know for a fact that that's all they've done, then you can claim vegan, but I'm not going to take that chance. I'm, you know, I'm honest to a fault, I guess, but I'm just going to let people know straight up what it is. So you get your used oil, get yourself a bucket, maybe a funnel and some old jugs like this to put your screened filtered oil in. And I was using cloth the other day and it was a little slow for me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try something different today. So I picked up some landscape fabric. I've been checking the, the holes in it and everything. And it seems like it's going to do a really good job. Basically, what I do is I set up over a bucket first, pour from one container or bucket into this through a screen one time. Then I will set up my jugs with a funnel and another little piece of this in the funnel and pour through again, and that's where I store them. Okay, so I've got my bucket, landscape fabric. I cut it so it's just a little bit wider than the bucket, and... I double ran a string around it, twine, and uh, oops, and uh, tied it as tight as I could. Double wrap, it kind of helps you get it a little bit tighter. And we're gonna try this, guys. So I'm sure there's easier ways to do the filtering, but I'm just trying a few things out as I go. All right, guys, got my bucket here with the landscape fabric. Let's give it a shot. Like I said, who knows if this is gonna work. Uh, there was no cheesecloth to be had anywhere I went today, so we're going to try this. Got a little bit left in yesterday's bucket, so we'll try that first. trick is going to be to keep the fabric from coming out from behind the string and falling into the bucket. By the way, put a piece of cardboard down so that you can soak up any little dribbles or anything that you get around. Uh, don't want this, the idea is to keep this stuff out of the groundwater and out of the dump and things like that. So.
Well, I'm gonna pour a little more on here, let it sit for a little bit, see what happens. Okay guys, so you just saw where I was trying to filter through the landscape fabric and it does work, but it takes a while. You're not gonna do more than a half a gallon poured into that. Uh, I guess I could have cut it a little wider to make it a more of a dish and I could have poured a few gallons in there, but it's all experimenting and that's part of what this is about. So uh, we're gonna let that sit for a little while. It's, it is filtering fine. Every, it's filtering just as well as the cloth I was using yesterday. Uh, and it's probably honestly not much slower. It's just a matter of I just got to pour, walk away, and do my thing. So, but I do already have some that's filtered. Like I said, it's been run through cloth filters twice. That's it. No other special filtering, no other additives. Some people will wash it with water and salt, um, do an actual washing like you would do for biodiesel. I don't think it's anywhere near necessary for this kind of soap. So, we're going to go ahead and make some soap. All right. Let's get ready to do this. Line our mold. That way it's done. And you're going to do this just like any other batch of soap that you do. Not really doing anything different here. Now the mold's ready. Now let's do our lye water. And I'm gonna give you a recipe at the beginning of this. Next, we'll pour our oil, tear that out. Sixty two point two ounces of our recycled vegetable oil, vegetable slash whatever was in it. And I'll be right back as soon as the lye water is ready. I am going to heat this just a little bit, maybe a minute, just to bring the temperature up closer to the lye water. All right, guys, I'm not patient, so I'm going to get this moving. I heated this up to about 120. Not bad. This is still at about 185. Um, it is dissolved, so that's fine. And the way I deal with it being two different temperatures like that, First of all, I'm not afraid to try stuff. You guys probably already knew that. Uh, what I do is I start running the mixer and then just start tempering it. Uh, just like I'm doing a custard or something. I just start pouring the lye water in slow and easy and then I can get a little faster as I go. The mold is ready to go. Let's get this done. See, it's got kind of a brownish color, almost like a coffee with creamer. Exactly the way it turned out for me the other day. It's got a little bit of a funky smell, but honestly, once it goes through saponification and you cut the bars, let them cure for a few days, there is no telltale scent at all. 
Now it's starting to trace. And I am done. Probably a little heavier trace than I wanted, but not going to hurt a thing. It's soaked. Just got soap on the floor. No! <laughs> really, all I'm trying to do is just get it mostly evenly dispersed through the mold. That's it. There it is. All poured and ready to go. I'll cut that tomorrow afternoon. Today's Monday. I'll cut that tomorrow afternoon. And we'll end up with bars like this. I like it. No stink. Wash is great. Sort of smells like a regular lard soap if you were to make one of those. All right, guys. Hope you got something out of that. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And uh, maybe tomorrow I'll film the cutting. See ya.